Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Small Steps of Freedom. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how you can start investing for financial independence. And some of the things I'm going to be talking about in today's video have nothing to do with you putting your money in the stock market, in the property market, or into whatever investment out there. They are pretty nuanced, but they definitely add to your financial independence and help you to get to that point. Point. And of course, I'm going to be discussing some of the best accounts that I feel that every single person who wants financial independence should have as part of their investment portfolio. But if this is your very first time here, before we jump into it, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss any of our content in the future. We talk all things personal finance to help anyone achieve financial independence and even retire early. Investing for financial freedom doesn't always look like taking your money and putting it into the stock market or into property, right? Sometimes it's about actually facing your finances. And this is the very first thing that you need to do when you start investing for financial independence. You need to face your finances. That means you need to have a very clear picture of what's happening with your money. So you need to know what your assets are, what your liabilities are, what your debts are. You need to know all of that that information so take out like your bank statements your letters from insurance companies every single thing that will give you a picture of where you stand currently and what this does is that it puts you in a position where you know exactly where you are that way you can actually start paving out what the next step should be for you right because the next step is going to be different for you compared to another person just because all of our financial situations are very different so you might find that you have a lot of debt so the next step for you would be to start trying to pay off that debt as quickly as possible or you might find that actually you're spending way too much money on going out and you start cutting down on that spending and really and really controlling your spending habits right so it's really important to take that first step of just facing your finances knowing exactly what's happening where you are currently because that will tell you what the next step should be for you and what the most important thing or the most impactful thing that you can do to help your financial situation so that's always the first step when it comes to investing for financial independence it is an easy step but it is a hard step because taking a look in the mirror sometimes can be scary it can be very very scary especially if you've been avoiding looking at your financials for a while now it might not be something that you were ready to look at but Get a glass of wine and whip out those bank statements and you'll be fine. Have, a, have that clear picture and you'll know exactly what you need to do next in order to get to where you want to go. So once you have that clear picture of where your finances stand and where everything is at financially for you, you can actually take the second step, which is starting to manage your money well. Unfortunately, for a lot of us, we never really learned how to manage money well, right? The school system never really took us through it. We never really saw it happening at home or no one ever really spoke to us about managing money, right? So we have to learn these things as we go along. But the good news is when you have a clear picture of where your finances are currently, then you can actually start taking the next step of putting in good money management habits that will help you to manage your money as best as you can, right? So this means actually doing things like budgeting and living below your means living below your means is probably like one of the most important of not if not the most important thing that you need to do in order to manage your money well because it creates the space you need in order for you to do things like paying off any debts that you have and even actually like putting that money away into savings and investments and building up your wealth over time so living below your means is what opens up everything else for you that actually allows you to build that wealth that you need and another thing that's also very important is the consistency right we always talk about you need to be saving and investing consistently so that you make it a habit and a really good trick or like a way to just get around making these habits like a part of your life 
quite easily is to automate your finances as much as possible if you're wanting to invest make that into a debit order where you're saving or you're investing a set amount of money every single month without you needing to have to actually go into your bank account and then transfer the money and do all of those things every single month right it removes that friction and makes makes it much easier for you to actually follow through with that commitment of doing it consistently every single month so automate your finances as much as possible it'll make managing your your money like so much easier another big part of managing your money well is just having a financial plan right and i think when we say financial plan it can sound so intimidating like it's like this comprehensive complex plan that you need to have but this is really like just a simple plan stating how you plan on managing your money in the long term right you can always go into a lot more detail in terms of the policies that you're going to have in terms of the withdrawal strategy that you're going to take um, when you retire and things like that um, but you can create a plan just to start off now to give you a picture of where you see yourself in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? And the nice thing also is you can actually consult professionals with your financial planning. So you can speak to someone like a professional financial advisor or a professional financial planner, and they'll help you actually create this comprehensive plan to help you manage your money in such a way that it actually speaks to your ultimate or your bigger financial goals, right? The next small step you need to take when you're investing for financial independence is to understand your risk. So risk is going to be attached with every single investment you ever make, right? There is always some sort of risk attached to every investment. What's important is that you understand the risk appetite that you have. So how much risk are you willing to take when you are investing in something. So you could be someone who has a low risk appetite, meaning that you don't like, like investments that go up and down a lot. You like a little bit more stability. So you may be drawn to things like money market accounts where you have a more stable average um, return. Whereas you might be a 20 year old who has a long time horizon in terms of how long you'll be investing for and you're willing to take a little bit more risk with your account, you might be able to actually invest in um, investments that go up and down a lot more than the person with low risk, but you would be also be up for up to get even higher returns if your investments perform well. So you need to really understand the type of investor you are because you could also be somewhere in the middle where you don't necessarily like a lot of risk, but you like some risk that is enough for you to get um, a reasonable return. So you really need to understand your risk appetite. And the nice thing is, there are some platforms online that have like um, quizzes that will help you actually understand your risk appetite and help you determine what your risk appetite is. Um, but the best way to be honest is when you start investing, you will start to actually learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you. So it's always best to just start investing and figure these things out as you Go along. The next thing is probably one of the best things you can do in when you're investing for your financial independence is actually investing in yourself. You are your best asset. I know that may sound a little cliche because everyone says it all the time, but it is so true. You are your best asset. So any opportunity that you get to upskill yourself, to get new knowledge, take it it will make you more valuable Being because it. that means that you'll be able to add a little bit more value into people's lives into people's businesses which means you're actually increasing your earning potential and as we know guys the more money you earn the more money you can save and invest and the easier it is for you to actually live below your means which like I said is one of the biggest things that you need to manage your money well and to build your wealth so do not underestimate the step investing in yourself is crucial in your financial independence journey 
when it comes to investing your money into the stock market, it's going to be so important for us to refer back to that financial plan that I spoke about. So that plan is going to help you determine what investments are aligned with the goals that you have. So for example, you might be investing for a child's future in terms of their education. You might be investing for your own retirement. You might be investing for a trip to Costa Rica. You might be investing for so many different reasons, right? So your financial plan is going to help you, help guide you in terms of what you're investing in and help you to actually match that up to what investments are aligned with that. So your financial plan becomes really, really important when it comes to picking the type of investment accounts that you have and the type of investments you take out as well. So one of the biggest things when it comes to investing is tax, right? Like SARS always wants their cart. The taxman is always at the door waiting, right? So you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of any tax advantage accounts that you can get. So the biggest one in South Africa is the tax-free savings account. So with this account, you can invest up to 36,000 rands a year tax-free and up to 500,000 rands for your whole lifetime. That means any money that you make and you put into that account will not be taxed by SARS. So all of that money grows tax-free. So the interest that you get from that, um, that investment, the dividends that you get, everything is completely tax-free. And that just opens your money up to so much growth, right? Because now you're keeping all of it instead of having to give SARS a piece of it, right? So take advantage of accounts like that, like the tax free savings account that gives you that tax advantage. Like I said, your financial plan is going to guide you in terms of what you're investing for specifically. So if you're looking at investing for retirement, then you're going to be looking at your provident fund or your retirement annuity. So if you are lucky enough, to work at a company that offers a provided fund you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of that and you're putting money towards that every single month and you understand what that provident fund is actually made out of right and but if you're not if you don't have a provident fund you can invest in a retirement annuity for yourself for your own retirement so the one thing that is really big to understand here when it comes to retirement annuities especially is that you can only access that money when you're 55. So you see, you see again, it's so important to understand what you're investing for because if you're investing into a retirement annuity and you're thinking that you're investing for um, your trip to Costa Rica or your whatever that's happening when you're 30 years old, that's not going to happen because you won't have access to that money. So you need to actually understand what you're investing for so that you match that up with the type of investment account and the type of investment uh, you should have. And then you, of course, you have your discretionary savings. So here you can save for property, into property, shares, into um, so many different things, cattle, farming, so many different things, right? So just make sure that whatever investment you take out matches your risk and matches the goals that you have. You understand the investment itself and all of that and you'll be set up for success so there you have it guys the process to help you start investing for financial independence i hope that this video was helpful for you and i will see you in my next video be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video and if you really enjoyed this video and you're inter interested in achieving financial independence i have a whole playlist on the topic of financial independence and early retirement so be sure to watch it right after this video but anyway guys thank you so much and i will see you next week bye